Over the last two autumns, we've managed to plant over 80,000 bulbs in the lawn, which emerge over the course of three months from mid-February through the end of May. This type of planting, though rare in the U.S., has its roots in the Netherlands and is known as Stinson Planten. Our goals for this area were to have a more productive lawn that would serve pollinators in the later half of winter and early spring, bring in a cultural garden to pay homage to Saunders' Dutch roots, and also to provide a tapestry of ever-changing beauty throughout the winter and spring. We had planted three areas of the lawn three different ways as an experiment. The first way included removing the sod, hand tossing the bulbs in, applying a new layer of topsoil compost, and reseeding the area with a low mow native lawn seed mix and interplanting with some low growing native wildflowers as well. The second way employed the use of a bulb tractor, which Cornell University's Plant Science Department kindly donated. This essentially makes an incision in the sod, sends the bulbs down a chute into the newly cut lawn, and then presses the grass sod back to the ground with the back tires. Finally, we managed to plant 10,000 bulbs last October and November on the sloped part of the lawn by hand with either a hori hori knife or a bulb auger. Last year snowed through the end of April, so it really wasn't until May when we got an impressive bulb show. But this year, the snow was light, and by mid-February, we got to see our first bulbs emerge. All right, it is the moment that we've all been waiting for, the glorious bulb show. And they made quite an impression this year, as you may be able to see from afar. There's a lot of updates on the bulbs this year. So we planted like 80,000. This is not all of the bulbs that have come up because the bulbs come up from February all through to the end of May.
right now it is early May and they are definitely earlier than last year. So last year, if you recall, we had snow up until about May. So we didn't really get that much of a bulb show until the last hour of the last day. Uh, however, this year it, we had a few days in there that were really, really warm. There wasn't much snow. And in February, we had quite a bit of aranthus and galanthus that had cropped up and then our crocuses, which we didn't really have much of last year. Additionally, this lawn has seen the most dramatic improvement of them all. And part of the reason was we ended up doing this low mow native lawn and it took a while for the seed to actually come up. So there wasn't really any cover of grass. So last year, this whole area had no grass. And this was the first year that these bulbs popped up and the muscari here are <laughs> crazy. There's so many muscari that popped up. We really feathered off the bulbs and we didn't tend to plant them down this way. So they're sparser because it's really, this area usually sits underwater on really wet days, but somehow in some way they actually made their way over there. And we planted them really densely around the edge as you'll see here. So this is kind of the walk path and you'll see that the edge is more densely planted to really define the edge. And of course we have like our regular dandelions popping up too. You'll see the anemone, you'll see the Fritillaria meleagris. It's kind of like on its tail end, although some are actually popping up now, but they'll go to seed. And all of these bulbs are perennial. So they'll graciously naturalize. They'll spread by more bulbs, or if they get pollinated, they'll also spread by seed. So this is year two of the bulbs. I think this looks absolutely exquisite. And then we'll check out the front lawn here. Now, if you recall, this was the area that had been done, this area and that area was done by the bulb tractor. And I think they had a much more even distribution with the bulb tractor. And we didn't take up the lawn in this area. We just used the lawn that was actually here. And you'll see that they were also a little bit more densely planted along the edge to kind of define the edge. And this area definitely has more tulipa sylvestra. So that's the yellow tulips that are pop popping up here. And I think this also looks really wonderful. The muscari are less of a, of a show in this lawn. And you could see some of them cropped up early and they're just starting to fade away. And then some of the anemones as well. And then this is our latest lawn area and you'll see that it's glowing right now as the sun is setting. And this one is probably the most erratic planted because we planted all of these with a bulb auger by hand. And in this area, we had a lot of eranthus and galanthus that popped up really early in the season. So I'm talking about February and March and they were probably mostly planted kind of here in this sparse area. And now all of these other ones have come up, but you could see we kind of like didn't mix them as well as maybe we should have. So you see like they're almost planted in lines. Um, so we could probably get away with planting a few thousand more, <laughs> personally in my opinion in this, in this area. Um, but it was a lot of hard work. I mean, putting them in by hand yourself, uh, and we had Joey and Kia came to help as well. They put in, um, you know, two or 3,000 with me, but planting the other six or 7,000 was a tall task. And I was surprised that all the tulips didn't get eaten here by like a squirrel or anything like that. But just a reminder, tulips are major deer food and luckily we have a deer exclusion fence so we're able to actually get away with creating this like meadow-like atmosphere within this area. So yeah, so this grass is gonna, we're gonna let it grow up. We'll probably mow the area in June. We're going to re-mow the paths sooner than that. And then 
the first week of June, we'll mow this down and then we'll just let it grow up throughout the season. And then we'll probably mow it again sometime in September after most of the grasses and the flowers that crop up in this area set seed. And that's some of the kind of strategies that we're kind of employing here is just mowing the lawn a lot less and letting it naturalize. Let's, uh, I should also just point out, these are native bluebells, Mertensia virginiana. And then you have some that are actually flowering right here. And every year I get just a little more bluebells. These are perfect for bumblebees. Some folks may say, oh, that looks a little bit like comfrey. And it does look a little bit like comfrey. And there are some European and English and Spanish bluebells. And they tend to spread very quickly. Uh, in some cases, they may actually be considered invasive depending on your state. I decided to go with our more native varieties. I like to actually do bluebells also within our forest. I'm planting a bunch of trillium now as well, uh, some of our native trillium within the forest and actually in some areas underneath the trees, which I'll have to show you in another video because it's like a whole other thing that we're doing there. But hopefully we get, can get some of those native bluebells kind of pushing out. Even if they pushed out in the lawn, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be angry about it. <laughs> so yeah, and then this grass, I'm very happy with how it came in. You'll see that there are some brown spots in it. It's kind of like patchwork quilt brown spot spots. And what I think that is, I think that is actually some of our warm season grasses. So the cool season grasses have come up and the warm season grasses have yet to actually come up. So it's something to kind of really consider because this was a total experiment within this lawn is just going with this low mo native seed grass and three different varieties. And again, just how we'll treat that one. We'll actually mow this over first week of June. Um, I'll probably redefine the tree circle because it definitely has gotten, you know, a little, a little grassy and, um, and ill-defined. So that's one thing we'll be doing. And then I wanna show you kind of our other area that was a bit of an experiment. And that's this lawn right here. And we've planted quite a few little bulbs. These, those tulips are open up earlier. These are slightly opened up. These are like little tulipa, critica, I think Hilde. You see some other ones that are coming up now. And we basically wanted to coordinate, color coordinate with the Magnolia Jane. So you could see that the Magnolia is just about finishing up her bloom. It's starting to look a little, you know, past its prime. And then we have some other tulips that were actually opened up fairly early. Um, I think they're called uh, Tulipa Critica Peppermint Stick. And we also have these little kind of flowers that we, we cropped in through, throughout. I'm not sure how I love this whole thing because the grass is just really aggressive here. It's actually quite uh, large and it's really hard to mow it and keep it low because it's just like the type of grass, it's like that type of Eurasiatic grass that just grows and grows and grows. So I'm not sure, I'd like this to look a little tidier is I guess what I'm saying. So we're still kind of experimenting with it. I love the the pink of the tulips coming up. This is another one that is a smaller tulip that you could see is coming up, but the grass kind of gobbles it up. So we'll have to come up with some better solution for that. And the front garden over here, we've actually planted quite a few bulbs. I did not plant <laughs> those tulipa sylvestra, that, the sylvestris that's coming up over there. I think that's probably on account of one of our little animals kind of carrying over tulip bulbs or maybe something got uh, messed up with uh, with where I was planting things. But I'm loving the way that things are coming together. I mean, obviously there's still more work to do, but the goal today was to actually show you a little bit of the bulb show and to also see what it looks like over the course of many months because it's just such a joy to be able to look outside the window on any given day 
and the whole lawn is different. It has different colors, it has different textures, and to have that from February through May, it's just absolutely phenomenal. And even when you get those warm days and the bees come out, there's actually a place for those bees to go, which is like super cool. This fall we'll be planting more bulbs on the slope part of the land and we'll continue to document the changes year over year. Now if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and remember to subscribe and tap the notifications button. We reinvest 10% of our Google AdSense proceeds back into the Finger Lakes community, so your support matters no matter where you are. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video.